seat belts, condoms, needle exchange, supervised injection sites. These are all examples of harm reduction you've heard of before. Through its inception, harm reduction was intended to balance our responses to drugs. Punishing people was not stopping drug use, so harm reduction was created to work in parallel with prohibition to mitigate its harms. Harm reduction has a few central principles. It accepts drug use as part of our society, it responds without judgment or requiring abstinence, and it meets people where they are at, acknowledging they face barriers to health and social services. Thinking about these principles, I wondered, how is harm reduction happening in practice? I spent one year at a community health, community health center doing, watching, and talking to people about harm reduction. My research demonstrates that by working in parallel with prohibition, harm reduction is limited. While in the field, I met wonderful and resilient people. We did arts and crafts together, shared meals, played cards, and sang karaoke from time to time. I found out that people come to harm reduction in order to pass the time or to wait for their doctors and social workers. They come to socialize, spend time with friends, and connect with the community. When harm reduction is available, it's vital to people's lives. Unfortunately, harm reduction is not always available. Instead, it is realized in specific location according to the program rules and schedule. The rules, schedule, and location all create a permeable boundary around harm reduction, allowing some practices to be carried out and other punitive practices to filter in. So what does that mean? Diane, an Aboriginal woman who brings equipment to Indigenous people who could not or would not conform to the boundary, provides an example of carrying out. As an example of punitive practices filtering in, I think of the day workers called the police on Tim when he refused to leave when they asked him to. Speaking with Tim afterwards, he said, you don't call the cops on me, I'm a nice guy. Getting frisked and escorted out by the police violated the safe space harm reduction had previously provided him. And yet Tim also understood, rules are rules, he said. Tim wasn't allowed back to the program for a week after that incident as his punishment. During that week, he non-fatally overdosed while using outside and was stopped by the police. The incident with Tim demonstrates when harm reduction falls apart and the disconnection between the philosophy of meeting people where they are at and the bounded practice. By working, oh, excuse me, harm reduction's institutional boundaries, its location, rules, and schedule all limit access to this vital service. In doing so, they perpetuate the harms of prohibition, for example, the threat of overdose. Harm reduction was intended to address the failings of our punitive drug policies, but by working in parallel with prohibition, some of its harms are left unfettered. Thanks. <laughs>